Hello. Thank you for listening. This is the near-death experience of PJ, and this experience occurred in 1970 and was documented on July 28, 2017. Open quote. It was awful when I got out of surgery. It hurt so badly. The doctor released me from the hospital to go home. It turns out that they cut my throat from the inside, and that night I bled out. I woke in a puddle of blood, too weak to move my head out of the blood. My grandfather, my champion, lifted me up while my grandmother cleaned me up and dressed me. We went back to the hospital. I was put in an old-fashioned white nightgown. The ride to the hospital was 138 miles of hellish and winding country highways. Every turn felt like ten tons was slamming into my limp body. I remember getting put on a gurney and watching the tube lights flash by. I know that the nurses tried to take my blood pressure, but I didn't have any. It hurt so badly for the nurses and the doctors to be touching me. I screamed, and that was that. I heard the doctor tell my grandfather, I'm sorry, we've lost her. She's gone. The pain was gone, and I was swimming in a plasma love light, real, so intense, and so loving, all caps. My grandfather was leaning over my body, praying to the great spirit for my life. I was more alive when dead than I had ever been alive in that small, weak, sickly suit they call a body. The plasma love light being beings showed me my grandfather praying over my body and asked me if I wanted to go back to him because I loved him so much. My answer was that he'd be with me soon anyway. (laughs) I tried to go back to playing. I saw my body. It was as if I had taken off a dirty set of clothing The body was lying there, but it was not me. It was just the suit I'd been wearing, and it wasn't especially a nice suit, as it was always sick. I was back to the area I will call the center of the Milky Way, playing in the black hole in the center. It is a very tiny galaxy in a very small solar system traveling around the black hole of the galaxy. I knew it wasn't even the size of a grain of sand while I was there. It was so tiny. I liked the colors and the freedom of movement I had without pain and without getting water up my nose. The love there was so intense, I never wanted to leave. The plasma love light angels grabbed my love light soul and hauled me away by force to my dead body. I watched the creator blow the breath of life back into my body. I told the angels I didn't want to go back into that body because it hurt too much. We communicated telepathically. I asked them why they would do that to me. They said like a voice at a stadium, We are sorry, but you haven't finished your job. They granted the wish that I wouldn't be in pain when I woke. I found my grandfather leaning over, leaning on my body, crying and praying with the two morgue attendants on either end of the gurney. The sheet was still over my head. The doctor had placed a sheet on me and folded my arms over me in a dead fashion. Press a corpse a certain way and it crosses their arms. I am guessing the doctor did that to verify I was dead. I sat up. (laughs) The sheet fell off. My grandfather started shaking me. I told him, get off me, you big oof. You weigh a ton. I slipped into unconsciousness at that moment and woke much later to see my grandfather beside my bed. I was being given blood from strangers. End quote. Now, she was so funny. I gotta love that part. The plasma love light angels grabbed my love light soul and hauled me away by force to my dead body. And of course, you have to love the next part. 
I watched the creator blow the breath of life back into my body. There are some questions here. Question, at the time of your experience, was there an associated life-threatening event? Answer, yes, surgery-related. While under general anesthesia, I had my tonsils removed, but because under anesthesia and suffering from extreme blood loss, I was pronounced dead. The sheet pulled over my head. I was seven years old, and I was always a very sick kid, so having my tonsils removed was just a thing to help me stay out of the hospital. I was very ill as normal in winter. Question, how do you consider the content of your experience? Answer, entirely pleasant. Question, rating your level of consciousness. Answer, more alert and conscious. Everything was more real with colors more vivid that can be seen with a human eye. I had freedom of movement to go from one place to the next just by thinking about it. There was a great love light surrounding me and I was part of it. Question, at what time were you at your highest level of consciousness? Answer, the moment before the plasma love light beings made me aware of my grandfather until I was reattached to my body. I had supervision, super knowledge, super loving. I had no hunger, thirst, or desires for anything as my plasma love light soul needed nothing that my body did. Question, did time seem to speed up or slow down? Answer, time had no meaning. I traveled across the Milky Way in the blink of a thought. I didn't know what it looked like until I saw pictures of it in the 1990s. I realized that's where I was from that picture of our Milky Way. Question, comparing your vision. Answer, my ability to see everything was so wonderful and the plasma love light was in everything. It is what holds the particles together. Science confirms that they don't know why parts hold together on a subatomic level. Question, comparing your hearing. Answer, I heard the sound of the Milky Way. It was singing its joy to love. Question, did you seem to enter some other unearthly world? Answer, I believe it was in, I, I believe I was in the black hole of the Milky Way. It was so light there. Question, what emotions did you feel during the experience? Answer, the greatest love, joy, peace, warmth, forgiveness, and understanding, and I was part of it. Question, did you suddenly seem to understand everything? Answer, everything about the universe. Honestly, I didn't want to go back into the limiting, all caps, body because it is unable to handle the knowledge I had while dead. <laughs> Question, did you come to a border point of no return? Answer, I was sent back against my will. Question, what importance did you place on your religious slash spiritual life prior to your experience? Answer, unknown. Question, what was your religion prior to your experience? Answer, other or several faiths. I am part American Indian, and I met the great spirit. Question, have your religious practices changed since your experience? Answer, yes. I won't ever set foot into a church ever again. It is too fake for me. Question, what importance do you place in your religious slash spiritual life after your experience? Answer, greatly important to me. Question, what is your religion now, other or several faiths? I believe in the plasma love light, the creator, not any other religion, but all religions that speak of love. Question, did your experience include features consistent with your earthly belief? No. My grandmother had OBEs all the time. She wore a girdle, and all you had to do was upset her, and she'd take a deep breath, and out she'd go. She told me of meeting Jesus and all her family that passed before her and a pearly gate. There was none of that in my experience. Question, had, did you have a change in your values and beliefs because of your experience? Answer, yes. Before, gold was a high value, money, things, homes, and possessions. Now it is how many lives have I saved? How many people have I taught to love in the most impossible circumstances? Life is something you can't buy. No matter how much gold you have, you can't buy more love or more life. 
question. Did you seem to encounter a mystical being or presence or hear an unidentifiable voice? Answer, I met a plasma love light, which may have been many beings or simply a very large being that spoke with the sound of many voices at the same time. It was like being in a stadium with an announcer. <laughs> Question, during your experience, did you gain information about pre-mortal existence? Answer, yes. I have lived many, all caps, lives. The message I got about this lifetime is that I am an ascended master and that I came back to love. I was sent back to do a job, which implies I am not working for me. As far as having been, memories are triggered when I come in contact with people who I've had prior contact with in past lives in this lifetime. There are exceptions, as I hate to be drugged. It eliminates my free will, and I hate to be told what my life is to be like. I love free will. I love life. The other things I got from this that should be mentioned is that I was more alive when dead than I am in body. I went around pinch pinching people, trying to wake them up after my NDE. I have brain damage from the NDE also, so I think I was gone for a while out of body. <laughs> During your experience, did you gain information about universal connection or oneness? Answer, yes. We are all plasma, love light. This life is not real. It's a hologram, and we accept the confines of the hologram so we can experience everything, all caps. To be without body means you have no desires, no wants, and no needs, and therefore have no understanding of hate, hot, cold, hunger, love, smell, hurt, pain, or even emotions about things. To be in body means you get to feel like it is all real and that the consequences of not caring for the body is death. Question, during your experience, did you gain information about the existence of God? Answer, yes, it is love. That is the only answer. Everything that isn't love isn't creating but destroying. During your experience, did you gain special knowledge or information about your purpose? Answer, yes. My job is to teach love, even in hard-to-understand ways. It is not loving to let your child or government get out of hand. Teaching your child or your government right is wrong, is loving. This hands-off upbringing where you don't even steer the ship, thereby running into people and pollute the world, is not loving, and it destroys life. We are all like ships and growing gardens. Either we decide our fate, or we run amok. Question. During your experience, did you gain information about the meaning of life? Answer, yes. Man can create beautiful, dead stuff. It is of no value. You can't take that fancy suit with you. You can't give your future self all the knowledge and wealth you accumulated in this lifetime to your future lifetime. The question I ask many people as I teach plasma love light classes is, will this matter in your next lifetime? If it is loving... It will. If it is destruction, we get to do this again until we figure it out. Heaven is here on earth, but so is hell. Question. Do you believe in an afterlife after your experience? Answer. An afterlife definitely exists. Yes. Being raised Cherokee, it was always a given that we existed before. This isn't a surprise at all to me. I was a scribe priest for the church in around 400 A.D., and I died of prostate disease, of which I can still smell when I focus on it. I remember many of my traumatic deaths from before this lifetime. I have always been trying to be closer to God. I was given that chance, and the Creator sent me back on a mission. Question, did you gain information about how to live our lives? Answer, yes. You break it. You fix it. We cause the problem by not controlling the government when we are responsible to love them, even if it means punishing them. Death is not permanent, but we have to work towards gaining knowledge and connections again. 
It is like going from farm to farm and having to return it to usefulness and then moving on once it is up and running again. Question. During your experience, did you gain information about life's difficulties, challenges, and hardships? Answer. Yes. That I can do this and I am no one special. I have a sickly body because almost all great masters have that. Einstein was dyslexic. Tesla was a sickly child, and Newton was very sick most of his life. Question. During your experience, did you gain information about love? Answer. Yes. I am to teach love. I go to court with families who are being torn apart and afraid. I have no fear, as the worst thing to happen to me is that I died, which is also the best thing to happen to me. I got to go home to the plasma light beings and tell them all about what love, hate, joy, hungry, happy are like. It's about the experience. Question. What life changes occurred in your life after your experience? Answer. Large changes. I spent time in my family unit being very Christian. In 2002, my husband admitted to molesting my two oldest children and I went into shock. I found I had these memories that I had always had them, but my meaning of why I was alive had really vanished. Because of the NDE, I have been able to help many people who also lost the meaning of life to live. To love even though it is tough to remember why we are here to experience everything. It is awesome to feel true power and love. Wow. Hmm. Question. Have your relationships changed specifically because of your experience? Answer, yes. It is harder to get me to anger when I know this is not real. Question. What experience difficult was the experience difficult to express in words? Answer, yes. The love is indis- indiscernible as is the colors, beauty, and sound without this meat suit. Question, how accurately do you remember the experience in comparison to other life events? Answer, I remember it more clearly. It was totally more vivid than my current lifetime. I can't tell you what I had for breakfast today, but I can tell you exactly what happened while I was dead. I can tell you how wonderful it was and how unhappy I was to find myself locked back into the body against my will. Question, do you have any psychic, non-ordinary, or other special gifts after your experience that you did not have before the experience? Answer, yes, my intuition is very strong, and I seem to know when to do things, even buy food for strangers who I didn't know were in need. I feel a push in my ribs to do something if I don't do it. I feel I have let down the creator when I see the poor person I was to help. Are there one or several parts of your experience that are especially meaningful to you? Answer, there are four questions of value in life. What is sacred? Or what is the spirit made? Of what is the spirit made? What is worth living for? And what is worth dying for? The answers to each of these is the same, only love. Question, have you shared this experience with others? Answer, yes. The Cheyenne freaked out. They were not okay with it. My grandfather spoke quietly to me about it and told me not to share it or I would end up in a straitjacket. I know it freaked him out, both me rising from the dead under that sheet and that he could lose me again. He didn't like being pinched either. There was a movie called Is Heaven Real that allowed me to open up about my experience. Until that moment, I, was re- I really was afraid to tell people. Question, what do you believe about the reality of your experience? Answer, experience was definitely real. It was so real. I kept pinching people to wake them up. This life is not real. It is just that the dreamer hasn't awakened Life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat is the one song I can sing note perfect because it has so much meaning to me. And I knew that this life was like I was dreaming when I was having my NDE. 
Question, at any time in your life, has anything ever reproduced any part of your experience? Answer, yes. I was the court watcher, and I helped many people with the corporate corruption in the fake courts. I am no longer teaching that, but teaching love and breathing love. I am showing people how to heal with or without my help. End quote. (laughs) PJ, you are something else. It looks like you always have been. Thank you for your great experience. And what a life. What a life. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Have a nice day.